Hi guys and welcome to our next pawn structure video. Today we're going to go over the hedgehog pawn structure which is known for these four pawns here in the center on c4, e4 that's Marossi bind from white side and these two pawns here. Now today I will talk about some basic plans for the both sides and basic setups for black here in the hedgehog structure. So let's just start with it. Now the hedgehog pawn structure is known to be a pretty passive pawn structure because as you can see black has all his pieces and pawns uh, on these first uh, three ranks and white has a really more space as you can see uh, he is on these first four ranks and because white has more space uh, white typically doesn't want to exchange pieces because like, uh, like you already know, if you exchange pieces, the side who has less space is probably going to be happy because he's going to have more space for his pieces to move around. So in the Hedgehog, Black might look pretty cramped here uh, with his pieces. But this pawn structure is actually very solid and these pieces are communicating really well. And a lot of times it's pretty hard for White to break this structure. Even though this structure is pretty passive and very solid, White still has to be very careful what he does because it can actually turn out to be pretty dangerous for White. Okay, so now uh, I told you some basics and some facts about this structure and I want to touch on some plans here. First for White. Okay, so White typically has uh, his two bishops here um, and are pretty important here because as you will see um, they can support these uh, squares here and white almost always has his knight on d4 and his not other knight on c3 or d3 and it can a lot of times move to this a4 square um, to support his plans which I'm going to talk about now the first and the biggest plan for white here is to play c5 and try to just break this uh, pawn structure and get more space and the second plan is to play um, b5 and the last plan is basically to play a4 and a5 but you have to do this at the right moment and it matters what your opponent does so but most often you will see this move uh, c5 coming in but first of course you have to prepare it and that's why uh, you a lot of times play Knight a4, and that's why uh, you played uh, the move b4 to support this uh, pawn push. Now, with all these plans, you're trying to break the, your opponent's structure, probably get some outposts, and open your pieces. So, if you manage to play out one of these plans in the right moment, then you will probably get a pretty pleasant game. Now, the main plan for black in this structure is actually to play d5. Uh, and to open this diagonal, uh, challenge uh, this, uh, challenge the center, and also try to open this diagonal for your uh, b7 bishop. So it might become a bit annoying for white. Now the second plan for black is actually to play his queen to the b8 square and maneuver his bishop to this c7 square, and then play d5. So you have this attack here on the h2 square and you can also move your queen to a8 if you want uh, some pressure here. So a basic idea here is to create a battery of queen and a bishop. And the third plan that you can see sometimes is to play king to h8, rook to g8 and try to attack uh, white here on the king side. By challenging his structure here and opening some files for an attack, since you have uh, this uh, diagonal here open also, so this would be pretty great. And then another plan that we can see sometimes for black is to play b5, challenging this pawn and asking him if he wants to move uh, forwards, and you basically play uh, the move b5. Uh, when the move uh, c5 isn't threatening for white because uh, if it is then you're just helping white with his plan with moving the pawn to c5 so these are basically the plans for the both sides here and today we're going to look at a game where white won 
Maybe we're going to take a look of some games uh, where black won in our next videos, but today I want to focus uh, how white won against this structure. Okay, so the hedgehog can come from the different openings, just like the Marochi bind pawn structure. And okay, the opening isn't that important now, the Sicilian defense. Uh, we can see already the Marochi bind uh, pawn structure. Uh, he's going to advance his pawn to c4. And okay, we see c4, basic developing moves, and now queen to c7. This is uh, really a normal move. Uh, preparing uh, probably uh, later queen to b8 and the bishop here to have pressure here so that's just normal and okay a3 you play a3 because you don't want uh, complications here uh, sometimes he can play bishop to b4 pinning the knight to king and you really don't want this and also uh, you play a3 to play b4 and prepare this c5 push or b5 push or whatever you're going to play so that's why a3 is a good move here and now b6 we see a normal hedgehog okay now it's not hedgehog yet because black doesn't have his pawn on the d6 square and he's going to do this but um, but if you see pawns on a6 and b6 and e6, we're probably expecting that this is going to come to a hedgehog pawn structure. So, okay, now what just developed, uh, normal developing moves, f3, and now we can see our hedgehog here, uh, this pawns here, really a typical position for the hedgehog pawn structure. And okay, now just development of the moves. You play your rook to the c1 square because you want to uh, have your rook at the same file as the queen because you're, you're probably going to play c5. And if this file opens, then your rook is going to be pretty useful here. So that's why you play your rook to c1. And okay, now he develops the d7 square and both sides castle and b4. Now in this game you will see a standard plan with the move c5 with white so okay now black put his rook to c8 also logical this this file is half open and he's also protecting this um, c5 square for further pushes of this uh, c4 pawn so this is a pretty good move here a pretty good square for a rook and white here played uh, knight to b3 now this is a pretty uncommon move for this position because most often your knight stays here on this uh, d4 square which is a pretty good square as you can see but in this game uh, the, the player with the white pieces decided to move it to b3 uh, to help this uh, c5 push as you will see so okay now black played this standard queen to b8 uh, preparing this of course and now white played the move queen to d2 also standard connecting the rooks probably wanting to go there with the rook add some pressure here uh, for example if he moves there then there might be some pressure here and black here played uh, bishop to d8 rook to d1 like we said and we see bishop to c7 now black defends both these pawns, uh, this bishop might look like a pawn but it's actually pretty good after a move uh, for example d5 and okay now white played a very interesting move here which is uh, bishop to f4 which is not a lot of times played but it's a pretty good move I think because it's kind of preventing black from playing d5 and attacking this pawn because here it's not possible to attack this pawn because you're going to take the bishop um, this is a pretty creative idea here so okay now black moved back and white played uh, king to h1 this is a really typical move uh, especially when you have a bishop here because then after d5 uh, when black attacks uh, your pawn you can play bishop to g1 and just protect this pawn so okay king h1 h6 
we see bishop moves the g3 back and okay this is not really important now and now he jumped to this um, pretty good square e5 with his knight but now white decided to just exchange this because he has uh, his idea with c5 in mind because now the pawn uh, went from this d6 square to e5 square and now it doesn't protect this c5 square anymore so this was a pretty good play by the player with the white pieces so okay we see c5 immediately which is of course correct now black played b5 here which is I mean okay because uh, of course if he takes this pawn then you take it with a knight and you have really big threats here and this knight is just a monster knight and you can see this uh, dark squared bishop is not really good here and and this light squared bishop is not good either so this would be pretty good for white so that's why black played the move b5 here but the disadvantage of this move is basically you can see this is a pass pawn here uh, protected pass pawn which is of course an advantage because it can promote easier so okay now white played the move a4 challenging uh, these pawns here and a lot of times in this hedgehog pawn structure you will see that this um, a6 pawn is going to be pretty weak because of the bishop here attacking it but okay now black uh, played uh, bishop to c6 defending the pawn uh, three times and now white just took the pawn uh, black recaptured and now we can see a maneuver of the pieces for white uh, he wants to attack this pawn basically because now he has two attackers and black has two defenders and he can't recapture the pawn and he wanted to attack it one more time so he played bishop to d3 okay f5 um, black is trying to get active uh, open some diagonals here and files so now white just played queen to e2 attacking this pawn really hard and okay black played knight to f6 and white took the pawn because black actually didn't have a way of defending the pawn so now the position for white is just winning he has two uh, pass pawns and as you will see white just crushed black here he moved back attacking this pawn uh, also this is a big threat so he had to defend it and now these pass pawns are just going to move forward and <laughs> this is a really terrible position for black so okay now black exchanged hoping for at least some activity which he didn't get but okay now you can see c6 you can see these two pawns are unstoppable and c6 is also played because of the next move that we're going to see uh, which is knight to c5 and now you can see these big threats here and the position for black is just over now black tried something i mean what can he do and white took the pawn you can see this pin here on the king uh, is very annoying black played uh, rook to f2 his last chance basically he had to do something active but this tactically doesn't work because of the move knight to f4 and now basically this is a check as you can see and if black moves there this is a beautiful checkmate here and if black moves there it's again a checkmate this is really a beautiful checkmate with a knight so black would have to give up his queen and this would just be of course winning for white so in this example we looked at the most common plan that white can use against the hedgehog pawn structure and this is to advance the pawn to this c5 square so what successfully prepared this with the move b4 adding support to this c5 square then he played his knight to b3 and all the white's moves were basically designed to prepare this c5 push which is very beautiful to see so this was a pretty good example uh, of the main plan for white against the hedgehog uh, pawn structure and in the next videos we are maybe going to look at some victories for black
but for now I hope you learned something new from this video and if you did please like share and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video